Are you ready to learn about an incredibly unique medium that is so much fun? If you've never heard of pan pastels, you're about to learn a lot. There are so many benefits to using this type of soft pastel, and I can't wait to share it with you. In this lesson, you're gonna learn many of the basics. You'll also learn that unlike regular stick pastels, these pastels are mixable, and I truly think they're just loads of fun. All right, guys, come in the studio, and let's dive into the beautiful world of pan pastels. Hello, artists of Monet Cafe Studio and patrons on my Patreon page. I'm happy to bring you a teaching theme this month that is a type of pastel that's different than any other pastel I've ever known, and they're called a pan of pastels. They're so fun, and there's so many wonderful benefits to using them. Not only are they just neat, they're these compacts of color filled with soft pastel medium. And one great thing that I love is they're mixable, you know, like acrylic or oil or watercolor. I love that they have these tools that are like painting with brushes. You have all these different tools with these different little tips, applicators, and just lots of fun. Another thing I love is that you can put them in their own little palette trays. And I like to do this and literally attach it to my board while I'm painting and use it just like paint as I'm painting um, soft pastel on my surface. So there is a lot to learn and a lot of fun to be had using this medium. And I think you're gonna love them. This lesson is mostly about learning the basics, which will be a great foundation for this month's pan pastel tutorials. I wanted to explain the general system of what I've learned about pan pastels and how the color system works and how blending of mixing of certain colors actually works a lot better than with just the stick form of pastels. So first let's talk about some of these colors. Now I uh, by no means have all of the colors. I have a pretty decent selection. Um, first of all, Pan Pastels um, gave me a set to do a product review video a few years back. And then I had a lovely patron of mine who was gonna move more into acrylic painting and she gifted me quite a few of her pan pastels. It was such a blessing. I felt a little guilty, but she says, you can pass on um, what you learn and um, create from these to others in Monet Cafe. So that was a real blessing. So let's start with kind of the layout. Um, they come in these uh, nice little individual, you can buy them individually, um, containers where they have a little top on them and on the bottoms, which is really nice, is they have their actual color number. So that's a real blessing and benefit to, um, in contrast to the stick form of pastels. Uh, once you take it out of the box, I mean, you can make color notes and everything, but sometimes it's hard to remember or find the actual color number of stick pastels. Whereas with pan pastels, bam, it's right there on the back. Another thing that's neat is it has this little um, screw section inside of each, uh, under each lip of the uh, pan pastel um, compact, I call them, so that you can screw them on top of other ones. So you don't have to have all of the tops. Um, these right here are all of the duplicates that I had. Um, like I said, I had some, I was gifted some, so I had quite a few duplicates. Um, sometimes they're a little tricky to get lined up to, uh, to have them straight, but um, these are all the duplicates I had in like different color families. So that'll be nice. When I run out of others, I'll have... Um, I'll have new ones to work from. So they also have these nice plastic palette trays. They have them in a large size that holds 20. Am I right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, 20. And then they have this one that holds four, uh, 10, 10. So 10 and 20. And um, I, I like both sizes. But what I've tried to do here is lay them out according to their colors. Let me start with these magentas first. I have my um, kind of pinks, purples, blues, going to turquoisey greens. This is usually how I lay things out, even with my other pastels. Um, the cooler greens would actually be over here. You see how cooler next to the cooler and warmer over here next to the warmer colors. And 
I'll just start with over to the, you know, the warms and the yellows and the reds. I'll just start with these uh, magenta purples and blues over here to give you an idea of their color system and how it works. Fortunately, the color system is really easy and practical. Basically, each color family uh, comes with variations on the main color or the pure color. Uh, for example, let me, let me go with these blues right here. I go from light to dark with the way that I'm laying them out. So the pure color or the base color would be like this color here. It is phthalo blue and it has the number here, but notice it's just plain old phthalo blue. Now they have a um, three varieties of this phthalo blue, uh, four total, but three others um, than the main color. One is called a tint. It's basically adding white to the blue. Um, so you've got your phthalo blue, you've got a lighter version of it, a tint, and you've got a darker version of it, a shade. So this is gonna be phthalo blue shade. Shade is always just a value darker, tint is a value or so lighter. And then you'll have a dark version of that color. It's phthalo blue extra dark. So once again, you've got four options for one color and um, I think that seems to be the way for every color. I'm just missing some of them. So here's another one where I have all four options. Here is the main purple, which is called violet. Then you've got a tint, which is adding white. You've got a shade, which is adding black. And then you've got an extra dark violet here. So again, four options. Now, this is the magenta color. Here is the pure. These would be all the pures right through here. Here is the pure magenta. I don't have the tint. I just don't have it. I would say I don't need it. I can use this, you know, that's close enough. Um, and then we've got the shade. It's a, a tad darker. And then we've got the magenta dark right here, extra dark it's called. And so I have the same thing with my ultramarine blues. This is the pure. This would be a tint. I don't have the shade, but I have the extra dark. This is, oh, I think I have these out of order. Yes, here's the pure turquoise. Here is the turquoise tint. Here is the turquoise shade. The shades, it always neutralizes them a bit. Can you tell when you add black, it's gonna neutralize it just a bit. And I don't have the turquoise extra dark, but that should give you an idea of how each color family works. Now, not to worry if you don't have a tint or a shade, or you don't wanna buy all those pan pastels. Here's one thing that's really neat about pan pastels. Unlike the stick form of pastels, pan pastels have the ability to mix colors. You can actually make all of the colors in the color wheel by using the primary colors of blue, red, and yellow. I'm just going to give a little demonstration here because I actually did not have a pure yellow. It's best to use what's called a Hansa yellow and then you'll get the ability to make all the colors of the color wheel. So I'm going to show you a little clip from a video right now where, I mean, why reinvent the wheel if someone's already done it better? And I'll provide you a little link showing you how to watch this in action. The artist is named Chrissy and it's from a channel called X Riss Art. And I'm going to put a link up here where you can watch this in a slower version. And also in the description of this video. So she demonstrates so beautifully, I love how she works on a gray surface, um, how you can actually combine three primary colors of ultramarine blue, red, and Hansa yellow to make the 12 colors of the color wheel. Now this isn't the only way you can mix pan pastels. I'm often combining colors to perhaps cool them off, warm them up, neutralize them, and the sky's really the limit as to how many colors you can make. Now I will admit it is convenient to have more of the pre-mixed colors in their individual compacts. It just makes painting a little faster but at least it can be done. So if you're on a limited budget, this is a great way to get started and be able to have more than just the individual colors within the compacts themselves. Now, another neat thing is you can make your own shades and tints. Remember the shades and tints? With pan pastels, there's a super easy way to make all of your own values. I'm going to be using this Ingress paper here. I have played around with this. It's an unsanded paper 
It's kind of like a drawing paper, but I found that it takes these pan pastels quite well. It is rough. Um, it's called, called a pastel paper. Um, so I did a little painting on it. It actually works quite well. So I'm going to show you just the example of how you can make a tint or a shade as long as you have the pure color. In other words, you don't have to buy all these tints or all these shades as long as you have the pure color and either white or black. Let me show you an example. So I'm gonna start with this purple one first. Here is our violet. Here is the pure violet right here. I'm going to go ahead and apply some here. See what I mean? It applies to this paper very nicely. And now I'm going to apply some white. Now I need to wipe this off. I like just using paper towels to wipe things off. I'm not, you know, just so, so careful to not get any of this in another color because these clean out very nicely. All right, so let's see what the, um, the tint of the purple looks like. So this is the actual tint from Pan Pastels. So it's really just, or violet, I should say. It's really just violet with white that they added. And now let's look at the shade version. See how it's just a little bit darker than that purple. And now, you know what? I'll go ahead and put in the extra dark because all that is is probably just more black added. So here is the extra dark. And I really do like having some of the extra darks because uh, it's nice to have for darker values in certain elements, but I'm pretty sure we can make that with just adding more black. So let's give that a try. What I'll do first, let's just um, give a good um, application of this violet, and then I'll add these shades to it, or tints or shades to it. Now we're going to just go ahead and make these um, rather than having, look at that. Oh my goodness, it really does work. We can make uh, a tint just using white. And you can make it as light or as um, dark as you want. So that's pretty close. That's a little darker than that. You can lighten it up. So you've got varying degrees of value that you can make this by how much white that you add. It's still a little darker, but I'm not, you get the idea. So now I'm going to make a shade. I'm going to clean off some of this white because that will affect our result. A little bit of the black. I'm not sure how much I need to add. Oh, not much. All right, so now we've got a, a shade. And you can go back and add more of the original color if you, uh, if you feel like you got it too dark. Yeah, so that's that's getting pretty close to that, that shade color. See that? And now, this was pretty close to the extra dark the first time I applied it on that one, so, so that's pretty close. So that's a wonderful thing, is that you don't have to buy all these tints and shades for every single color if you've got white and black. Now let me share another neat feature about Pan Pastels, the colorless blender. There's also another option available with Pan Pastels. It's this one that's called a colorless blender. And this is for actually blending, softening edges, and making the color a bit more transparent. And this is the first time I am using this, so I'm gonna see how it works. I'm gonna kinda clean this one off a bit. Um, let's take this beautiful turquoise color. This would be the pure color. And let's apply some of this. I'm gonna put it on just a good solid application, not too thick or not too thin. And let's see, well, add a little more over here. I'm gonna compare it to just adding white. Um, white is obviously gonna take the color down in value. And I'm assuming that this colorless blender is going to um, not change the value. That's my, that's my guess. Okay, so let's grab a little of this and I'm going to Blend it a little bit. So yeah, what this is doing is it's allowing me to move this around and kind of um, 
lighten up the transparency or make it more transparent rather than making it um, just whiter. Um, it's still, it's a little bit lighter in value, but not a lot. Now let's see the difference of adding white. I'll try not to get that violet on there. Okay, so that's using the colorless blender. And this is, you see how it looks more chalky and um, opaque? That, that colorless blender definitely keeps it um, more with it, its transparency. You see, this is more of just a transparent look. So if you're going for a really soft, transparent feel, I would definitely go with the colorless blender. That's a nice option they came up with pan pastels. Man, they thought of everything. I wanted to talk about a few other colors that I would recommend um, for you to get. But if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you're going to be receiving an additional, more content. My patrons always get extra goodies, but I'll be recommending for my patrons some of my recommended individual colors you can purchase if you're on a budget and some sets that I recommend. If you want that extra content, let me tell you how to become a patron. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. You unlock hundreds of lessons. You always get my extended content. Plus it's just a beautiful family. And I love the fact that I get to see your work as well. Now back to talking about some of these colors. You can of course mix your own greens as well, but I like to have some greens that are pre-mixed. This is a permanent green. It's just a nice middle value green. I like some of these yellowy greens as well. This one's actually called Hansa Yellow Shade. And this one here is the Bright Yellow Green Shade. Um, they have a pure form of those colors as well. Remember a shade is just a little bit darker. And speaking of darks, I like to have some pre-mixed darks. This one is a Chromium Oxide green extra dark and here are a few other darks that i like this one is phthalo blue extra dark i also like the magenta extra dark and finally the dark purple it's the violet extra dark and now let's talk a little bit about these applicators they're actually called soft tools it has two f's in soft tools and there's a great video i'm going to share a link to this video it covers these tools so well i love these little sponges they give a full demonstration on it i'll have a link to that video in the description of this video but i love all the variety of these applicators i particularly like this applicator myself Again, if you're a patron of mine and your extended content, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the soft tools that I recommend. Now I'd like to share with you some of their other fun products. Pan Pastels makes pearlescent colors. I have, I think, a full set of them here, but they are shimmery and pearlescent, obviously, and I think they're great for painting things like butterflies and dragonflies, so they're a lot of fun. And wait, there's more. They also make metallic colors. I believe they have six metallic colors available. I haven't tried these yet. And this is something about Pan Pastels that I love. I love their storage trays. They actually come in two sizes. They have a 20 set storage tray and a 10 set storage tray. Now let me tell you why I love these. They're of course a very convenient way to arrange and keep all of your Pan Pastels. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I actually like to design my own custom palette before a painting. And I will attach this palette tray directly to my easel with a clip. It works great. You'll see me do that in some future videos coming up this month. And to get the Pan Pastels in and out of the tray, it's a little bit easier to use one of the tops, the screw caps, to uh, screw it on and pull each color out. I don't use that method, I just take them out with my fingers. Another advantage is because they're see-through, you actually can just flip them over and easily see the color names and numbers without taking them out of the tray. Now I'm gonna tell you one thing that I really like about these trays. This makes pastel painting so travel friendly. Watch how these stack up to make such a nice compact storage system for your pan pastel colors. Now this makes it so convenient. If you're traveling, you don't have to worry as much as you do say with stick pastels that can sometimes break easily. And here's another great feature, whether in the studio or taking these while you travel, they are less dusty than regular pastels. So that should be good news. Before wrapping up, I wanted to talk a little bit about surfaces. Because the Pan Pastel applicators are a little delicate, especially the ones that are small, I recommend not using any pastel surface that's too coarse. 
Of course, any unsanded pastel surface will work just fine, such as Canson, Mitant's pastel paper. There's various unsanded surfaces you could use. Also, Color Fix, made by Art Spectrum, has a smooth surface. They have an original surface as well, and it works on both, but really the smooth surface works even better. And one of my favorites is Pastel Matte. It has the ability to take so many layers, and yet it's rather smooth. So that's my primary recommendation. It's a little pricey, so if you're just getting started, play around on some unsanded surfaces first. All right, now that you know so much about pan pastels, it's time to paint. And I have three lessons planned for you for the rest of this month where I'm gonna be putting these pastels in action along with the applicator tools. And I'll be sharing how to paint with pan pastels, but also how to combine them with your regular pastels as well. So as not to miss all of this pan pastel painting fun, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you're a patron of mine, you know you're gonna be getting all the goodies and I can't wait to see your work. All right, everyone, God bless and happy pan pastel painting.